Good morning, fellowship. If you must talk, talk to God. If you must whisper, whisper a prayer as we prepare for worship. Happy Women's History Month, Fellowship. I'm Pasha Spencer, and this is your weekly edition of FNN, Fellowship News Network. The Lenten season is here, and our fast is in full effect. Remember, no bread, no sweets, no fried food, now until Easter, with Sundays off. Also, we are encouraging everyone to join us in our spending fast, where you can choose one of the following. No online shopping, no purchasing of clothes or shoes, no eating at restaurants. Make sure you get in where you fit in as we fast and pray together as one church body. Join us on Tuesday for Vitamin C at 12 p.m. via Zoom. This is our noonday Bible study where we get to see God through his word. Join our senior care ministry for their property tax exemption and unclaimed property workshop on Friday, March 10th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will have representatives from the Cook County's Assessor Office and the Illinois State Treasurer's Office here presenting and answering any questions. RSVP by calling the church office by Wednesday, March 8th. We are praying for the family of longtime member Miss Eunice Little, the mother of Dr. Joseph McCray. Mr. Henry Strickland, the brother of Mrs. Zephry Pugh. Please keep these families and all of those that have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. Now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. that time again at Fellowship Chicago. Jesus Week 2023, April 3rd through 6th, hosted by Pastor Reginald W. Sharp Jr. with special guests, Senior Pastor of Christ Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, Dr. Gina M. Stewart. Living for God and living a prayer-filled life is hard work. Senior Pastor of House of Hope Atlanta in Decatur, Georgia, Dr. E. Dewey Smith. What's most important is not what I can acquire or ascertain. I'm at a point where I want Jesus. Assistant Professor of Preaching at the Seminary of the Southwest in Austin, Texas, Dr. Dominique A. Robinson. We honor the work of our ancestors. We honor the work of the generations before us, and we have a responsibility to maintain the legacy. Senior Pastor of the Lighthouse Church in Houston, Texas, Pastor Keon Henderson. If God said it, you can bet your bottom dollar, you gon' see it. Nightly Jesus Talk with Joanne M. Terrell, Ph.D. from the Chicago Theological Seminary. All people have a stake in pursuing goodness and justice. Powerful music ministry from Crystal Rucker. Jesus, 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 Kick off 
each day at 6 a.m. with Dr. Daryl Hall. In the world, what goes up must come down, but in the kingdom, what goes down must come Worship with us daily at 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. Jesus Week 2023, April 3rd through 6th at Fellowship Chicago. That's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and social media pages for these announcements and more. For real-time updates, text Fellowship Chicago, one word, to 55949. As we move forward, stand on your feet and worship with us. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his peace endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for his sovereignty endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Good morning, fellowship, to those of you in the physical building and to those of you in the virtual ship. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, how we love you and we thank you. God, we magnify your holy name because, God, you are so good to us. God, now we ask that you would just breathe on this service, God. God, let your Holy Spirit interrupt all plans and intentions that we have. God, we just love you. We thank you. God, we ask that you would forgive us for any sins and unrighteousness, God, creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit, God. We love you. We'll forever give your name the glory, honor, and praise. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands right here like this. Everybody clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands all over the building right here.
Anybody gonna choose to bless this morning? I'll bless. One more time. Forever. I'll choose to bless His name. I'll bless His name. Bless his holy, bless his holy name. Can you help me say it one time? Say, I will.
As you get your communion, what an appropriate song. As you stand with us for this third time of 2023, as we follow the command of Jesus, that as often as we do this, we do this to remember him. There is no way that you can make it without the Lord. You might look like you're doing all right for a little while, but if you want continuity, if, if you want longevity, if you want a prosperity that you don't have to be paranoid about, it's good to know that the Lord is on your side. Do I have a couple witnesses that can admit there is no way that I can carry all I have to carry, do all I have to do, accomplish all I seek to accomplish, and I don't have the Lord helping me with it. And then some of us can join in and say, and I've tried. <laughs> over, <laughs> over, dated the wrong person, over, over, Went my own way over, over, and over. Thought I was applying to what I should have been applying for over, over, and over. But there is no other way. As we park now, we remember Jesus today. And as you hold that bread in your hand, as we do what he did with his disciples in that upper room, do you know why we use unleavened bread? 
One of the reasons why we still use unleavened bread is because of what happened in the Old Testament. God was getting ready to deliver and set the children of Israel free. And deliverance came so fast that night that uh, the children of Israel didn't have time to let the yeast rise in their bread. So they had to grab what they could because when God's trying to bring you out, sometimes you just got to grab what you can. And so they grabbed unleavened bread because it didn't require any yeast to still eat that bread. I speak over your life as we commune together and eat this bread that this is the symbol of some quick deliverance. This is the symbol of some suddenlies that shall come to pass before this year is over. It represents the body of Christ, but it also represents what Christ can do in your life. He'll bring you through it so fast. You'll look back and not even know how you made it through. The church of the living God, let us eat together. Of course, Jesus taught us that the wine, the juice, symbolizes his blood that will be shed on Calvary's cross. The book of Hebrews tells us if there be no shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. But just like the bread, there's an Old Testament connection even to the blood. There was a night that the death angel was visiting houses. And to make a long story short, God said those who had blood over the doorpost of their house, he told them that if you had blood over your house, the death angel would pass over. Now, I'm, I, I'm not God, and I can't tell you why everything has passed over, but I can tell you one possibility. Some things have passed over you because your life has been covered under the blood. I dare you to tell your neighbor, I'm here today because the blood made some stuff skip me. Some bullets skip me. Some outcomes skip me. Some things that could have gone the wrong way skip me. Yeah, I, I wasn't any better than anybody else, but just some stuff skip me. And, and it ain't that I'm too good, it's just his grace is sufficient. And his mercy are new every morning. And my life is, what can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. As we drink, let's celebrate the Passovers that have happened, are happening, and will continue to happen in your life through the blood of Christ. Church, let's drink together. Say with me, I represent Christ. Thank you. And I represent Christ everywhere I go. When you gather yourself and put your... Uh, you know, your leftovers up. Give two or three people a hug and say, I'm glad it passed over you. I'm glad it passed over. I didn't know I'd get through some things, but I'm glad it passed over. Yeah, COVID passed over. Some sicknesses passed over. Some enemies' plots passed over. Some weapons that were formed could not prosper because through the blood of Jesus some stuff don't play with it you survived some accidents because it passed over you bounced back from some stuff that took other people out because it passed over anybody can take a few minutes and thank your God let's have a Passover praise open your mouth and thank your God Yes, sir. Hey. Didn't hey. he pull you through it? Didn't he keep you in it? Didn't he, he show up and step in? Over. 
and work some things out. It passed over. Yeah. It passed over. It passed over. Yes. It passed over. Everybody let me hear you say it. it passed over. Welcome to Fellowship Chicago, where we believe in blessing the name of the Lord. You may be seated in God's presence. We thank you. I pray you already feel welcome. I pray you already feel welcome. I pray you already feel welcome. You know, we we good and Baptist over here. So on the first Sunday, we we come with intentionality to thank God for the blood, to thank God for the cross, to thank God for the redemption that has been accessed, accessed through Jesus Christ. And down in my little church in Decatur, where it's greater, on first Sunday, sometimes they say, it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. And then it gets good. They say, oh, yeah. Oh, the blood. Tell, I dare you to tell me what it does. It gives me strength. I got one more question. How often, how often from day? Today, it will never lose its, its power. I don't know if y'all know verse 2. It soothes my doubts and calms all of my fears, and it dries all dries all my tears anybody know something about the blood that give me strength from day to day it will never lose it's it's power. One more time just for the pastor. It reaches. I don't care how high you go, you're not going to get higher than the blood to the highest mountain. Has anybody ever had some low days? I got good news. You can't get lower than the blood. It flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, all oh, the blood Woo. that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Play it one time, Willie. Play it one time. Play it one time. In a world full of people that want to shout over money, in a world full of people that want to shout over stuff, in a world full of people that want to shout over materialism, I wish I had a remnant that could still get happy over the blood of Jesus. Hey! We thank God for his presence. We thank God for his presence. You may be seated. We may be seated. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Heavy on the, it gives me strength. Heavy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's the, it gives me strength for me. From day to day. I don't care what Tuesday holds. By Wednesday, I have new strength. Don't leave me alone. Please leave me alone. I, I got to preserve myself. Y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Well, I'm grateful to be in worship today. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be in worship today. Yes, I am. Happy, happy, thankful, thankful to be in worship today. Now, y'all stop it. Y'all stop it. Sit down for a Tell your neighbor, sit down. Tell them, sit down. Pull them into their seat. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that. Don't we? No, 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 no. We're going to be good today. 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 Thank you, Lord. The truth is, you don't need no music to shout. You ever been home by yourself? Been in the grocery store all night? You don't need no music. Music is a bonus. When I think of the goodness driving in your car, almost couldn't see straight tears in your eyes giving God glory. You don't need no music to bless him. If I couldn't say a word, I promise God I'd bless him at all times. It didn't matter what season I walked through. I've made a promise You got 20 more seconds. You better stop playing with it and go on and bless it.
Nobody told me the road would be easy. Don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Go on and clap those hands and give him glory. Go on and give him glory. Give him glory. I recently, y'all be seated for real. Be seated, be seated. Shh. Hey, hey, listen, this just, just, just lift your hands, Willie. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Tell him thank you. Lift your hands. Tell him thank you. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. I recently met a, met a man who, uh, he left a church. He said they sing too much. He said, I don't, I don't like all that. Just, just go on, give me the word. Let me get home. And I just listened patiently. I said, well, don't ever. <laughs> I said, don't come to my church. We don't tell the Holy Spirit when to move. Sometimes it's a still moment. Sometimes we're exuberant. But we go through too much during the week. Not to feel his presence. On Sunday, I came here. We come to church to get a fresh touch. Uh, I came here. To feel his presence. I came to bless him. I came, I came to enter his gates with thanksgiving. I came to enter his courts with praise. I came to be thankful unto him and bless his name. And if you want to know why, for the Lord is good. His mercy, oh Lord. mercy endureth forever it won't run out mm, 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 mm. I'm sorry y'all I'm sorry I'm sorry he's been good to, the, to me he's been good to me well listen all right One time, one time, y'all sing. We are so grateful for the presence of God at our church. I don't take it for granted we are in this Lenten season. And I'm praying that you all are embracing this season with God. Join us on the prayer call every Monday through Saturday. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m., Saturday at 12 noon. No fried foods, no bread, no sweets. We're trying. Amen. Aren't we trying hard? Tell your neighbor, get it together. Get it together. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some lying going on in the sanctuary. Don't even judge them. Don't ask no questions. Just tell them, get it together. No sharks in this season. No heralds in this season. No Chick-fil-A number ones. No shakes in this season. 
So we're going to make it. Just, you know, just about mm, 20 some days left, 30 some. We'll be fine. We're going to be fine. As for me, I'm not doing any shopping. No clothes, no shoes. Monday through Saturday for Lent. How is that going for some of y'all? No shopping, no online shopping. You can tell the people that ain't got nothing to say because they ain't moved, they get stiff, they just... Get it together. We're fasting. I'm telling you right now, if I don't eat out, I'm gonna be a, a, a Slim Jim by the time Easter gets here. So I couldn't do that one, you know. I can't do that one, not yet. I gotta learn how to cook a little bit better before I can do that one. Just pray for your boy, don't judge me, just pray. But, but that's what I'm doing. So I want you to join us in this. And if you're doing it, you should see already how much money you've been able to save, you've been able to keep in your account. Amen. That's the point of this. And, uh, and I'm really excited. Show us the number, media team, where we are for our fun first Sundays in eliminating this a million dollar debt. $170,000. I'm, I said that wrong. I said it right. $170,898. Come on, let's praise God. Fellowship, I said, let's praise God. God's grace and your support have made it possible for us to see that. I'm believing by faith before this weekend commences, we're going to reach $250,000 plus and once we make it to 250,000 plus, we would have reached 25%, a quarter of a million dollars. And uh, Brother Lamont told me, he said, Pastor, it would feel real good to go on and cut this check in the summer. I said, now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all, if everybody commits to bring that $100, well, he can cut that check in the summer. And that million dollars can be done and we can move on to what's next. And I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm telling you, don't, don't, don't doubt God. In this season, obedience will be followed by suddenlies. In this season, obedience will be followed by suddenlies. One, three more times, three times for the Holy Ghost. In this season, Every time you're obedient to the will of God, the word of God, the vision of God, it will be followed by a suddenly. A lady didn't have a lot of money to bless me for my birthday. I'm just going to give you an example of what a suddenly looks like. I ain't telling you to do it, but I'm telling you what happened to her. She, the Lord told her to write me a $500 check for my birthday. She told the Lord, that's a lot of money. I got stuff to do, and that's a lot. I love my pastor, but, that, but the Lord told her and wouldn't leave it. And she wrote it $500 before she could put the envelope in my hand. Somebody, an old friend, hit her up and gave her the exact amount of money back in her account the same day because obedience shall be followed by some suddenly blessings. If you believe it, let God know that you received that. I'm telling you what I've seen, y'all, is happening all over the church. In, where am I suddenly blessing folks already? You done seen God do some stuff already. Come on. They're not lying. There's no need to lie about it. Look, look at the testimonies. So just up your faith a little bit in this season and trust God. We're praying for Miss Zephyr Pugh in the passing of her brother. This is her final sibling that has passed. She's the widow of the late Dr. Deacon Ephraim Pugh. Uh, Miss Pugh, we love you. We're sending love your way. Earlier at 8 o'clock, Dr. McCray, Joseph McCray Jr. was here. We celebrated the life of his mother, Miss Eunice Little, who joined this church in 1956. The church was founded in 1950, so you could do the math. She's been here a long, long time. Miss Little used to sit on the second row where Miss Wendy and Miss Hazel are, and it didn't matter what guest was supposed to come that day and sit on that row. You had to sit on the other side of Miss Little because Miss Little wasn't going to move. Miss Little said, this right here is my seat, and nobody ever bothered Miss Eunice Little. But more than that, 
She was a Sunday school teacher, and a lot of the teachers we have around here, Dr. Walker, Dr. Deanna James, Miss Walterine, a lot of the teachers were impacted by Miss Eunice Little. Can we thank God for her legacy, her memory? A teacher's teacher. Graduated with a degree from Moody Bible Institute and was never a preacher. She was that serious about the Word of God, so her legacy will live on with us for a lifetime. Where's Miss Josandra Polk and Deacon Griselda Harris? They led us through Black History Month with excellence and elegance the entire month. Come on up here, Miss Josandra. We have something for you. Deacon Griselda, come on up here real quick. Fellowship, y'all turn up. It's not easy being creative and organizing people on behalf of our church we have something for you we want to bless you deacon darian help her up the steps help her up the steps on behalf of your church family we just want to say thank you you made me so proud to be black for the entire month of february and I'm telling you, our children were impacted, our seniors were impacted, and you were multi-generational. And all that you did from the screen to the stage, we all felt your heart, we all felt your love and the passion that you poured into your work. So receive these baskets of love as we help you go relax and have a spa day on the church. We love you. We love you. Somebody take a picture. Let me see where y'all going. I love you. Where you going? The Ritz Carlton Spa. I'll meet you there. Amen. I'll meet you there. I love y'all. Come on, help them down the steps. Thank you, Deke. I love you. Thank you, Miss Joseph. Give them a big hand. They worked so hard. They started planning last year for what we experienced in February, and we thank God for it. Five of our high school students were able to go to the White House and watch the screening of Teal, the movie about Emmett Teal. I want Christian Suggs and Victoria Bonner and Quaylen Petty and Joshua Skelton and Devin Tiffith. If any of you all are in the room, stand up. Y'all make some noise. Our youth, we were able to send them to the White House. They're in youth church. Amen. Y'all give Miss Mona Johnson a hand. She took five of our youth to the White House and they were able to see the President of the United States, President Joe Biden, and meet certain people there. And I'm just so glad. I'm honored that Dr. Otis Moss III, the pastor of Trinity, called me and he said that they were looking for some youth in Chicago to go watch the screening of Emmett Till because Emmett Till was from Chicago. And so Dr. Moss called me, he said, I believe that there's some seats available. And he told them, you can't come to Chicago and not go to the black churches that helped be the foundation of the civil rights movement in Chicago. Y'all better hear me here. So Moss called me, we called Ms. Mona, and we were able to send five of our youth to the White House. I haven't even been to the White House, and that's the reason why I wanted them to go, because every generation ought to be able to do stuff even you haven't had a chance to do. Come on. I'm excited about that. I'm happy and honored that they were able to go. And I told them I haven't been to the White House yet, but when I get there, it's going to be the Black House by the time I leave. I'm telling you, so we're grateful, grateful. Today I'll be preaching at 3 o'clock for Reverend Leandre Hill's installation service at Freedom Baptist in Hillside, Illinois. They told me that that is in uh, West Zamunda. That is out west somewhere far away. And, um, and those of you that's coming far away out there in West Zamunda with me to Hillside, Illinois, come on out to Freedom Baptist Church. This is my first time preaching a pastor's installation service. It's a very special moment for him that he's been elevated to be their pastor. And he trusts me with the moment to preach the message as he enters into this new season. Church, say amen. Refuel will commence March 21st, March 21st in the building. And I can tell by the claps how many of you are going to come. March 21st, Tuesday, it'll be right here where there's just me and Deacon Johnny. We're going to have a good time in refuel. Amen. 
and the Lord is working on me in a series that you don't want to miss on focus, focus, focus. We got to get our focus back. You will never accomplish anything if you don't focus. And so that's the series. I'll tell you more about it later. We're excited for Jesus Week. I want this church packed every night. Come on, y'all. Jesus Week is Holy Week leading up to Easter. This was a vision started by Pastor Jenkins, and we're continuing the legacy, y'all. Some of the greatest preachers, some of the greatest spiritual thinkers, some of the greatest psalmists are coming to be with us that week. We have 6 a.m. with Dr. Daryl Hall. He blessed us last year. You're in for a treat. 6 a.m. in the morning, less than an hour service. I'm telling you, you may feel like I'm staying in the bed, but you're missing your blessing. It's nothing like that fresh wind in the morning. Morning. And then on Monday, Dr. Gina Stewart. Tuesday, my pastor, Dr. E. Dewey Smith. Thursday, Wednesday, Dr. Dominique Robinson. Thursday, Pastor Keon Henderson from Houston, Texas. And every night, Sister Crystal Rucker will be our guest psalmist for the week. So you, I'm telling you, it's going to be off the chain. Tell your neighbor, make sure you're here. Make sure you're here. Don't just watch from home. Come on in the building. Whenever we call a revival or an experience like this, it's for you. It's for your soul to focus in on Jesus. And as we get ready to give today, as we get ready to give today, I want all of you who are giving that $100 seat, go ahead and get your gift together. Those of you who are joining us on this fun first Sunday, this focusing our undivided attention on next, as we get rid of this million dollar debt, I encourage you to sow by faith. I'm telling you, if you just be obedient, there is a suddenly that's going to chase you down and even it's going to it's going to even shock you what the Lord does in this season. So so that we don't take too long, those of you sowing that $100 seed, especially those of you on the virtual ship, come close, come close. Those of you in the room sowing that $100 seed today or whatever you do above tithes and offerings, I don't want you to limit what you give. If God has blessed you to give more than a hundred, that's fine. I think I've, I've sown way over what the ask was because I believe by faith. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Amen. I've already given my 1,000. I was in that crew, but I'm going to give even some more towards this because I believe in the future of fellowship. Yes, we have a great history, but you ain't seen nothing yet about what God is going to do for the membership of Fellowship Chicago. If you're giving that $100 seat today or any seat towards that fun first Sunday, stand with me all over the building. Stand with me. Stand with me. Even if you've already given it and you're saying, I'm in solidarity with your pastor and I'm giving it. If you're online, go ahead and sow. But if you sow virtually or electronically, make sure that you specify fun on your giving on Zelle on Cash App on Shelby Next add fun to it if there's no space so we know to direct it there that $100 if you're giving your tithes and your offerings today stand with me stand with me stand with me some of you say I can't give the 100 today pastor but I am going to give an offering in this atmosphere and I'm going to bring my tithes the, the dime out of every dollar belongs to God if you make one grand every week $100 belongs to God. Don't keep what's not yours and then be looking crazy when you're trying to figure out why you have holes in your pocket. You have holes in your pocket because you have not taken care of God's business first. Lift your phone, lift your gift to the Lord and I want you to speak it loud with faith. Say, Lord, I come to give my offering and sow my seed from a place of faith. I believe your word. You said if we would sow, we would also reap. You said that if we give and take care of your house, you would open the windows of heaven. Come on, say it. You would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that I don't have room enough to receive. I trust you and I expect a blessing suddenly in Jesus name amen come on let's give let's give if you're in the room the black buckets are for tithes and offerings and the center receptacle is for fun if you're in the balcony the deacons will lead you and let you know which one is which if you're in the overflow the deacons will specify to you which one is which thank you deacons for serving today God bless you 
All the fun seeds go in the center and all of the tithes and offerings go on the left and the right. Let the church say amen. Come on, give me some energy, B-O-G. every one of you in February I wasn't here a lot because of uh, my grandmother's passing but I had a request for one of our deacons to take us back and uh, Deacon Tony Rogers y'all get me a microphone y'all give Deacon Tony Rogers a hand he's gonna give old school Baptist we call this the sermonic selection the hymn of preparation and uh, I want you to prepare our hearts for the word and if you know this song, don't you leave him out here by himself. And if you don't know this song, just know that your grandma them and your granddaddy them, this is one of those songs that carried them over. 
Deacon Tony, bless us, and we got your back. Thank you. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Give God praise. Thank you, Dee. I will trust. Grab your Bibles, Mark. In the Lord. That's what they used to do. I will trust. Come on, stand with me. Mark chapter 1, verse 9 through 13. I will trust. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dee. Come on, sing it from your soul till I die. Remember that right there until I I can't sing all the verses, but this is mine. I am gonna stay on the battlefield. Yes, sir. I am gonna stay on. Y'all sound mighty good, fellowship. I am gonna stay on. How long are you gonna do it? How long? Until I die I'm gonna Yeah Yeah Feel Amen. Mark chapter 1, I want to read verses 9 through 13 out of the New Revised Standard Version. And I want to read it out of the Message Bible. Before I preach, let me just let you know how appreciative I am that uh, over the last couple weeks you've been so kind to me. Sympathy cards, hugs, messages, and just an outpouring of love. This is my first time standing to preach in a month. 
and I'm so grateful for fellowship. I don't think I would have made it through without you all's love and your prayers. Um, the last time I stood here to preach was the first Sunday of February, and uh, some of you were here. I flew out the door, head into Atlanta, thinking I was going to come back on Monday afternoon, but I ended up staying much, much longer because my grandmother passed the next day, and uh, she was on life support when I left. I didn't really know the extent, and I'm so glad I did not know. And I think the Lord had me up here for a reason because he was doing his business. And he had her already in his hands. And so for those of you whose faith doesn't make room for your prayers not being answered the way you want them to be answered, let me just tell you, sometimes it doesn't happen like you want it to. All of your prayers are, are always answered but they're not always answered the way we want them to be answered. And so in this season of my life, I'm learning how to trust God with a no. I'm learning how to trust God that if someone is that sick on a ventilator with four machines keeping their body pumping, that's not living. And healing can happen on this side or healing can happen on the other side but I'm so grateful that my grandmother who survived COVID at 81 years old and bounced back from that and had to be on dialysis for two years I'm so glad she's resting I'm so glad she's at peace and I believe with all my heart that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord my prayer and my request is y'all keep praying for me I was a grandma's boy. You hear me? My grandmother helped raise me. And so even this series that we're entering into, the Lord spoke to me. And uh, I believe it's even appropriate for the house, seeing that we're focusing our undivided attention on next. The Lord spoke this series that I'm going to preach from from the next two months, entitled Forward. Tell somebody, you got to go forward. And the scripture today really captures how Jesus was assisted in moving forward in his ministry even while some difficulties and some odds were stacked against him. Verse 9 of chapter 1 in Mark reads like this from the New Revised Standard Version, then I'll preach primarily from the Message Bible. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts. One version says wild animals. And the angels waited on him. Verse 9 of Mark chapter 1 out of the Message Bible reads like this. Read it with me. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out the water, he saw the sky split open and God's spirit looking like a dove come down on him. Along with the spirit, a voice. You are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once, this same spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For 40 wilderness days and nights, he was tested by Satan. While animals were his companions and angels took care of him. I want to preach today under the series forward from this specific topic, finding the faith to go forward, finding the faith to go forward. You may be seated. You know, I'm going to talk to your neighbor kind of preacher. And so turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to find the faith to go forward. The morning after my grandmother's funeral was difficult because Bree and I had to awaken and immediately start packing up our clothes to head to the airport to make, an, uh, to make a reservation I had already made for my birthday. And so we had to leave Atlanta on, on the Tuesday after the funeral. And, uh, and y'all, you, you know how it is after all of the preparation and all of the people and all of the fried chicken. Why do black people bring so much fried chicken 
to houses when somebody dies. We had enough chicken to feed the whole city of Atlanta in our house. I guess it's a sign of love, but it was a house full of fried chicken and pound cakes. And, uh, and just people, 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 business, business, business. And I was one of the family members that helped the, do the arrangements behind the scenes. My grandma taught me how to do that stuff. You know, you got to call and get things in order and programs and obituaries have to be written. And I was just tired on Tuesday morning, but we had to get to the airport. And so I'm moving slow and my wife and I are two different people when it comes to making reservations on planes. She wants to be there two days early to get on the flight. I'm cool with walking up 30 minutes before time to board and just walking on with everybody else. Is there. So, so, you know, Bree and I have to really be intentional on, on plain days because her spirit will get vexed. And if you've never seen a Gemini vexed, you don't want those kinds of problems. And so I have to kind of move a little faster on those days. I just was tired, though. I wasn't feeling it. I just was, I was moving slow. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Just people have been people and people are nice, but people have been people and I was just tired. I was just wore out and I was moving slow and I told you I went to Atlanta with the intentions to stay one day and I ended up staying for over a week so that means clothes from Zara had to be stuffed in bags that I did not have folks with the pound cakes and all the stuff I was trying to bring back to this is all pre-Lenten fast by the way uh-huh, uh-huh, pre-Lenten fast I was stuffing it in there just trying to close I was moving slow had clothes and stuff everywhere and I had to turn on some jazz that's what I do sometimes when I need a vibe when I need a good smooth vibe, I don't want any words. I don't want anybody talking. I just need a good alto saxophone. Give me, yeah, some, uh, give me some, yeah, I don't even know the names of the people. Y'all know, I just like, I just, uh, Ch Charlie Parker, and uh, one of them is named Washington something. I just enjoy good, Grover Washington, there it is. And I just enjoy some good jazz. And that's what I did. I turned on jazz on my Apple Music, and all of a sudden, as I'm packing, I'm finally getting my energy back. A lady starts singing on the song. I said, I ain't asked for no talking today. I don't, no, I don't need no talking. I started moving to the phone to skip the song and the lady started talking uh, and, and she said, turn the page and start anew. Seek inner peace and with your mind and soul focused on love. She was, it was so smooth. I said, my, turn the page. Start a new. It was like I was listening to Read and Rainbow or Sesame Street. It was wonderful. And then I started listening. I said, This is good. This is good. Deacon Johnny. And then she sang another verse. She said, Turn the page. Dare to be brave. Filled with joy as a light that shines between the stars above. But the line that motivated me to start packing a little faster was she said, Turn the page. Y'all, I went to find out what the song was. I went to find out what the song was. The song is named Mercy. Now, what some of y'all don't know is, this is the Monday after my grandmother had passed. So it's Tuesday morning now. And so I'm, I'm listening to a song about mercy. But the day I went up to the hospital and we had to make a decision to leave her on the ventilator or take her off the ventilator, the, on the elevator were the words etched mercy. The prayer call that morning, the theme scripture was God's mercies are new every morning. As I got into Atlanta to face the tragedy and as I left Atlanta, my life was bookended with mercy. You heard me, but you didn't hear me. And so I'm listening to this song about mercy that God will literally give you the mercy to turn the page. I don't know who this is for, but that's not just for me as I cope with the death of my grandmother. Somebody in this room has to find the spiritual strength to learn how to turn the page. Whatever has happened has already happened. You can't control it. You can't change it. But you and I have the power to say there's got to be more in this story. I have to have the faith and the courage and the inner tenacity, the inner equilibrium to turn the page and go 
forward even when life is threatening to make me feel like I've had my best days and I've already seen the greatest uh, miracles I will see in my life. God sent me back to the pulpit with my little bit of energy just to tell somebody in this season we got to find the faith to keep going forward. The devil is a liar. Whatever the devil has planted in your mind to make you think is over, make you think there's no more life, make you think life is not worth living, make you think that mistake has now stained the trajectory of your possibilities, the devil is a liar. And you have a God who says, I can make all things new. You have a God that says, if you walk with me, you may not get there fast, but step by step we can go forward who am I talking to already who needs that I don't care if it was a breakup I don't care if it was a death I don't care if you lost your job I don't care if your family is filled with Judas's and you wish they were filled with Jesus's whatever it is God is going to give us the spiritual strength that we need to go forward I dare you to tell your neighbor go forward and sometimes you got to go and Paul said forgetting those things which are behind and I press I press towards the mark of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus I need some pressers in the room I need some people who know my best days are not behind me and I can still walk forward because eyes still have not seen and ears still have not heard and it still has not entered into the heart of men and women the great things that the Lord has prepared for you if that don't make you happy I sure hope you find some joy somewhere but you got a God who says we going forward and it ain't over till God says it's over and that's why I like this text today because in Mark, we're going to be hanging out in Mark for a few weeks because I like this over 40 times in Mark. You see the word immediately. You see the word straightway because the author of Mark is trying to show us that Jesus is on the move. Jesus keeps going forward. People were talking about him. People misunderstood him. There was pressure on him. He had temptations. He had to fight his own flesh. He had to fight people that were supposed to know him better than that. But whatever happened, happen he just kept going forward and it's not that he was literally moving fast watch it the author of Mark the author of this book is not a literal move that he was moving fast it's a literary move to help you quickly understand how things are unfolding for Jesus because watch this we really don't understand Jesus until we get to Calvary you really don't understand him in Mark until you get to the place of his suffering ring and isn't that true about life you really don't know who Jesus is until you have to suffer you really don't know who Jesus is for you until it's time to carry that cross and it's time to sit in the garden of Gethsemane preach sharp I'm sure trying has anybody ever learned about Jesus not on the mountaintop of ecstasy but down in the valley of tragedy that's where you learn he'll keep you that's where you learn he'll provide that's where you learn he'll step in and turn things around he keeps moving forward because we gotta get to the cross but how did Jesus find the faith the fortitude the focus the energy to keep going forward even when sometimes it feels better to just stay still sometimes it feels easier to just quit Sometimes it feels easy to just drop your head and stay in the bed and drop your hands and turn, turn off your phone and put it on do not disturb. But God said, no, 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 no. I have more for you to accomplish. A couple things, a couple things. I'm not going to be long, not going to be long. But if you holler back at me, I'll be even quicker. Uh-huh. Number one, here's how you find the faith to go forward. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Number one, we are graced with a pre-established path. Talk to your neighbor and tell them you got a path already set. 
It's already said. Mark chapter 1 verses 1 through 8 are going to tell you this. But instead of me reading it all, can I just read verse 4 through 6? Go there, go there, go there. Verse 4, verse 4, verse 4 and 6. John the baptizer appeared in the wild preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem. And as they confessed their sins were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild feel honey as he preached he said the real action comes next the star in this drama to whom I'm a mere stage hand is going to change your life now I just told you one of the ways that we find the faith to go forward is why because we're graced with a pre-established path it's not deep it's direct God allowed John the Baptist to be the prophet to prepare the way for the people to receive Jesus Christ. That's why Elizabeth got pregnant six months before Mary because what Elizabeth was carrying was going to baptize what Mary was carrying. John the Baptist's purpose was not to be the light but to point people to the light. A whole lot of preachers will have a better ministry if we know the light ain't about you and you are not the light and you're not the superstar but your job is to point to the one who is the superstar John the Baptist prepared the way so that by the time Jesus shows up on the scene the path has already been laid out the people's hearts are all ready to receive the Messiah and a lot of us would get this point if we understood there are people who God has put before you not for you to hate on them but for them to teach you but some of us are so arrogant that we start making enemies out of people who are supposed to be our teachers. We start hating on people who are really there to be our mentors but if you're humble enough you'll understand nobody is an island and none of us have made it here by ourselves and every now and then you ought to stop and thank God for the people the deacons, the coaches, the teachers, the mama names, the uncle names who help clear the path for you. I'm here to tell you right now you ain't got to fight to go forward you can flow forward because God is already going ahead of you and allow people to clear the path for you. Preach sharp. I am told you I'm trying because without a John the Baptist, there is no Jesus. Without a Vashti, there is no Esther. Without a Naomi, there is no Ruth. Without an Elizabeth, there is no Mary. Without a Paul, there is no Timothy. Without a Moses, there is no Joshua. Without an Elijah, there is no Elisha. Without a Septima Clark, there is no Rosa Parks. Without a Howard Thurman, there is no Martin Luther King Jr. Without a Martin Luther King Jr., there is no Jesse Jackson. Without a Sojourner Truth, there is no Dorothy Height. Without a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, there is no LeBron James. Without a Maya Angelou, there is no Amanda Gorman. Without an Aretha Franklin, there is no Jennifer Hudson. Without a Richard Pryor, there is no Eddie Murphy. Without a James Brown, there is no Michael Jackson. Without a Jeremiah Wright, there is no Barack Obama. Let the history books tell the truth. Without a Calvin Butts, there is no Senator Raphael Warnock. Without a Shirley Chisholm, there is no Kamala Harris. Without a Harold Washington, there is no potential for a Brandon Johnson to be the next mayor. Without a Reverend Lewis Ross, there is no Reverend Clay Evans without a Reverend Clay Evans there is no Pastor Charles Jenkins and without a Pastor Charles Jenkins there is no Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr. everybody has had somebody that has gone before them to help clear the path and I dare you to stop being arrogant and humble yourself and thank God for the people that have helped clear the path for you it's already happened, but I speak prophetically right now. Your next win will be because somebody brings your name up in a room you've never walked in. Stop making people your competition and see them as collaboration. Tap somebody and say, humble yourself now. And you better be careful how you treat folk because you don't know which person God's going to use to take you to your next level. Walking past people half speaking. Only walk in church and speak to people who you think are important. You may be sitting by a millionaire and don't even know it. If I were you, I'd reintroduce myself to my neighbor. How you doing? I don't know you like that, but I... 
They may look plain, but they may be a CEO. They may be dressed like they don't know nothing, but they may have favor. They may smell like weed, but they may have God's word for your life. Somebody shout, I'm going forward. And it won't be just because of me. God's going to align my life with the right people at the right time to bring me to the right place. Do I have some witnesses? Somebody right now is living right now because somebody ahead of you propped the door open. Arrogant people are irritating because they're great liars. You did not bring yourself. You did not get yourself through school. You did not pay all them bills by yourself. Somebody prayed for you. So yes, we will thank God, but we will also thank the people that God used to help clear the path. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we are so compassed about Hebrews chapter 12 with a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, run the race that has already been set before you. Ooh. I'm about to step over in prophecy right now. Because somebody don't believe God's word. I speak right now before March is over. He's going to put the right person. I'm sorry. Are we in a Lenten fast or no? I said he's going to put the right person in your path. Your net worth is going to be found in your net work. That's why you got to stop being mean. That's why you got to stop being trifling. That's why you got to stop being iffy. I don't like everybody. Forget who you like. God can use an ant to bless you, a rooster to preach to you, a donkey to carry you. It don't matter. I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to stay there that long. But do you know how many doors you've shut because you rejected John the Baptist? We gonna go forward because we've been graced with a pre-established path. Can I give you another one? We can go forward in spite of whatever you're going through because we are God's children filled with purpose. Oh yeah, filled with purpose. Filled with purpose. Verse nine, verse nine, verse nine, verse nine, verse nine, verse nine. At this time, uh huh. John's through preaching now. At this time, here come Jesus from Nazareth. Now let's just tiptoe through this for a minute. Nazareth, you know John. Book of John, Gospel of John, one day they told one of the disciples, he said, uh, you know Jesus is from Nazareth. And then they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Just a little small ghetto town, it just, you know, wasn't much to it. But Jesus came from Nazareth. In Galilee, watch this, and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's spirit, looking like a dove, come down on him. Along with the spirit, y'all reading, there was a voice. And the voice, we believe, was God's voice. And God said, you are my son, chosen and marked by my love, proud of my life. King James Version said, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Now here's the tension. Mark is one of the only gospels that doesn't give us a birth narrative of Jesus. Have you ever noticed that? If you want to preach an Advent or Christmas message preachers, you can't go to Mark really. You got to go to Matthew or Luke. That's what we learned about the angel going to Mary or the angel speaking to Joseph. We don't get a birth or infancy narrative out of Mark. When Jesus pops up on the scene in the gospel of Mark, he's already 30 years old and people are quick to dismiss his divinity because he looks so human. 
they, matter of fact, if you keep reading one of these sermons, I might get to it. He can't even do mighty works to heal people in his hometown because the Bible says, and they had no faith. Jesus had to leave a place because the people didn't have faith. And they kept wanting to call them the carpenter's son. What church has Jesus left because the people didn't have any faith? And so he's here in Mark, and it looks like he's just come out of nowhere. And you know what? Find yourself in the text because people treat you like that too, don't they? They act like you just bust on the scene. Where you come from? From my mama. Where you? I mean, I don't know her. Well, who your mother? My mother doesn't do this. Well, who your father? They're trying to figure out how you got to where you are. They're trying to, they, they asking probing questions, but they're really trying to be nosy because they're trying to figure out how you got all this favor on your life when you didn't really come. Where you from? The south side. Where you from? The west side. Where, really? Well, what school did you go to? I went to a regular school and I got a regular degree. I come from a regular little neighborhood, but there's one little thing on my resume that you overlooked. I am God's child. And because I'm his child, there's some stuff that's been available and open for me. Not that I'm better than you. I just know I'm God's child. And I'm trying not to holler, but the more I think about it, that's what will give you the energy you need to go forward. It doesn't matter if people like you. It doesn't matter if they overlook you. It doesn't matter if they don't think you're worth anything. What gives you the qualification to step in every room, every meeting, every classroom, every job, every opportunity with your head up is that you are God's child. 11 o'clock, you're making me work too hard. I need somebody that know that the fact that I'm God's child is the only thing you need to know about me. I'm God's daughter. I'm God's son. And God takes care of his own. And what I love about this text is, even before Jesus does any miracles, God says, I'm pleased with you. God's embrace doesn't require you to perform to earn his love. Did you hear what I just said? See, what makes it stressful when you're in the wrong relationship is you got to keep proving and performing so that people will affirm that they love you and they got you. But when you are God's child, before you do anything, he already has his hands on your life. Am I making sense? So Pope, help me with this because some of y'all not feeling me. I can tell the balcony half sleep. Uh, you know, Pope, Pope help me. He said... He said, Sharp, do you realize how many opportunities Anita has had to meet major people just because she, she's your goddaughter? I said, really? He said, yeah. Anita, six years old, has met the governor of Illinois, has met the mayor of Chicago, has met celebrities and gospel artists and famous folk that have come through this church and come through my former church, all because... When it came time to shake hands and it came time to snap a picture, I pulled her little self in the picture. And as old as she gets, some of these memories she'll always hold on to. And she's in the picture in some major moments, not because she earned it, but because I'm her godfather. I pulled her into some frames. I pulled her into some pictures. And now she's benefiting on having major moments just because she got a major godfather. Some of y'all with your arrogant self ought to turn up in this sanctuary that you are in some pictures and are in some frames not because you all that and a bag of chips but God pulled you in the picture and because you're his child you have access to favor access to opportunity take 10 seconds and bless your God that you belong to him you are his sheep he is your shepherd 
And if I get even deeper, through Jesus, we've been adopted. It's one thing for me to be your child by birth, but when I'm your child by adoption, that means you wanted me to be with you. You paid a price. Y'all, I'm getting happier and happier, and y'all just sitting there looking at me. Keep sitting right there. Through Jesus Christ, you are not just born his child. We've been adopted as his children, not just by birth, by choice. He wanted you. So no matter who breaks up with you, you hold your head up, and you tell him you can leave if you want to. I'm still God's child. You can be broke. I'm still God's child. You can be brokenhearted. I'm still God's child. Some of you haven't had your nails done in two months. You got socks on and your feet are covered. Not because you're cold, but because them jokers could scratch carpet. You just done let yourself go. Ain't been to a manicurist. Ain't, seen, ain't had a pedicure because you just down now. He left me past. And I just hadn't been the same since. It's all right. Grieve if you must, but baby, go get your pedicure. Go get your manicure. Go get your hair did. And put some highlights in it if you want to. And every room you walk in, you say, I may be down, but I ain't going to look like it. Because I'm still his child. On a bad day, he's still my heavenly father. I trust in God. Wherever I may be, out on the land or on the stormy sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul, my heavenly father. Watches over me. All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Am I too much for y'all today? Uh -huh. Grace with a pre-established path with God's children filled with purpose. Can I give another one? Here's how you find the faith to move forward. We're guided by the Spirit in difficult places. Verse 12 says, at once this same Spirit pushed Jesus into the wild for 40 wilderness days and nights. He was tested by Satan. I, I want you to pay attention to that language. And the same Spirit that fell on him like a dove pushed him into the wild. Hmm. Because sometimes you're going to go forward not because you want it to. Listen to me. I know you have sleep. Wake up. Sometimes you're going to go forward because the spirit does more than make you shout. Sometimes the spirit will push you into a wild place. So every time you hit a hard place, it's not always demonic. Sometimes it's divine. And the Spirit led Jesus in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. Can you trust the Spirit when it takes you to an uncomfortable place. And we get quick. The devil show is busy. Yes. The devil is busy. But every time somebody tells me the devil show is busy, I say God is too. And sometimes God will allow the Holy Spirit to push you to the wilderness so you can be enrolled in Wilderness University. There's some classes, some courses, some lessons, some tests that you and I need, Brother Kenneth, that we can't get unless we hang out in the wilderness. You will never be the fullness of what God called you to be without some wild stuff. Oh, I wish y'all would listen. See, if all you had were sunny days, you would be living in a drought. So God has to send some sun and some rain to balance out your climate. Because vegetation only grows with sun and water. 
And so I've got to be mature enough that all of my days are not going to be bright. All of my days are not going to be happy-go-lucky. I will have some difficult places to visit. But I am visiting sleep. Yea, though, I walk, I feel like preaching, through the valley. That is not my location, it's a visitation. But there's some lessons in the wilderness. And then the Bible had the nerve to say, and he's out there with wild animals. Come here, some of y'all work with wild animals. Some of you sitting beside a wild animal, keep looking straight ahead. Some of you got wild animals in your family, just wild out of control, can't be tamed, won't sit down, vicious, they growl, and they're dangerous. But maybe God at the beginning of his ministry had to help him face a test from Satan so he would be ready for some harder tests. How can you run huh, with the horses and the foot soldiers have tired you? That's a scripture out of the book of Jeremiah. How are you going to keep up what, with, with what's coming? And you can't handle this. Can I tell y'all this? And I'm almost done preaching, so you can go on and wake up. Wake up, wake up. Tell your neighbor, wake up, wake up. Tell them it's about to get gooder. It's about to get gooder. Do you know how hard it is to be a pastor trying to comfort others when the truth is you need it yourself? Do you know, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm not saying this to get sympathy, I'm about to show you a theological point I had to get to. I, I, don't, I don't need your sympathy in this. I appreciate your empathy, but I don't need your sympathy. Uh -huh. it, it's not always easy when you are a leader, because some of you are leaders, and you got to have your head on straight, and the truth is it feels like it's falling off. But the company or the organization or your family or your house is depending on your mental stability. But you don't always have it together. But it's not until you embrace the wilderness that you discover, even if this lasts for a long time, and even if I got to fast and pray and seek God and struggle through this, I am not by myself. And it's some lessons you only learn in your loneliness. It's some sermons you only get in your sleeplessness. There's some jewels you only discover in junk. There's some gospel you only get in garbage. There's some diamonds you only get in disasters. There's some sapphires you only find in a struggle. There's some treasure you can only get in the trash. There's some goodness that only comes through grief. And if you just embrace this wilderness, when you come out, you will be stronger. I told my wife years ago, I wish people would just leave me alone. I wish nobody would crush me or put any unnecessary pressure on me because my name is really not Reginald, it's Olive. And whenever you crush an olive, all you gonna get is oil. I wanna introduce myself again. This is the oiliest you'll probably ever see me in my life because when you've been crushed, when you've been tested, when your faith has been up against the wall, that's when the oil starts flowing stop hating on people who look like they got the stage you don't know what it costs for them to be there can I help somebody shake somebody's hand like you're gonna shake it off and tell them this oil cost me something and if they didn't get a little happy find somebody else and shake their hand and say this oil cost me something I had to fight through to get here I had to cry through to get here I had to pray and fast and walk the floor at night to get here but good things come to those who wait and I speak over your life that you can move forward because God's gonna grease you up with the oil of the Holy Ghost to help you make it through the wilderness I got one more thing to tell you and I gotta put this mic down but can y'all help me preach and put your hand on somebody's shoulder and tell them neighbor you got to go forward because you're graced with a pre-established path 
tell them you are God's child. Tell them you're guided by the Spirit in difficult places. But lastly and finally, tell them we are guarded by angels while we're under pressure. The Bible says he was out there in the wilderness with the wild beasts, but the angels took care of him. I wish I had a witness of somebody in the room who knew God or sent an angel. Matter of fact, the Bible says the angel of the Lord will encamp about them who fear him. And the Bible says that God will send angels, divine representatives, angels, ambassadors from the corridors of eternity, angels, representatives from heaven that will stop by and take care of you until you get it together. They'll keep you together. Is there anybody here still believe in angels? If Reverend Evans was here, he'd say all night and all day, angels been watching over me. I don't know why y'all looking at me like that because some of y'all are alive right now because angels covered your babies. Angels covered you through the ICU. Angels carried you through COVID. Angels brought you out the accident. Angels blocked that bullet. Angels carried you through cancer. Angels were over your house. You didn't even lock the door. But there was an angel that wouldn't let danger unseen come in your house. Is there anybody here been kept by an angel well lift up your hands and tell your God I'm going to give it all I got I'm going forward because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world step by step day by day battle by battle struggle by struggle tear by tear night by night you keep on moving forward and the angel will take care of you shake somebody's hand and shake it like they owe you some money shake it like you got oil on your life shake it like you mean to shake it and say neighbor the way I'm holding on to you is the same way God is holding you hold to his hands God's unchanging hands build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hands time is filled with swift transitions none on earth unmoved can stand but build your hopes on things eternal hold to his hands trust in him who will not leave you whatsoever years may bring if thy earthly friends forsake you still more closer to him cling hold Oh, oh, oh. How about three people say, God's got you. God's got you. Keep going forward. Cry if you must. Crawl if you must. Some people still looking at me funny. Well, if you want something to look at, I'll give you something to see. Because I got one more thing to prophesy over you. No weapon formed against you. Yeah, shall be able to prosper. Walk into it. Matter of fact, start walking right now. Take a few steps. But whatever you do, don't go backwards. Every step, go forward. And remember 
weeping may endure for a night, but all joy. I'm waiting on a couple more, y'all. Show the devil. Tell your haters. Show your family. Tell yourself. And as you walk, can I tell you what you look like in the spirit? The Lord is your shepherd. He's in front of you. Can I tell you what you look like in the spirit? You've got his rod and his staff. They comfort you. I got his rod and his staff. Elder, Nate, and behind me is goodness and mercy. Let's go for a walk, shepherd. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, April, May, June, July, August, September, December, through every battle, through every diagnosis, through every funeral, through every test, I'm covered on my left, covered on my right. Somebody give him glory, cause everything is already all right. Don't wait for music, shout right now. Like you know, tomorrow's covered. This week is covered. Everything. Ah! How does it feel to be covered? How does it feel to be covered? How does it feel? I'm done. To God. To God. Y'all help me on the first Sunday. Let's go. Let's go. All the pain. All of the pain. All of the pain. He's done. All of the pain. All of the things, 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 all of the things. Hold somebody's hand. Make a power line on your road. Say, neighbor, I speak by faith. As you go forward, you are not alone. I'm about to praise God for the blessings that are about to find you. And you praise God for the blessings that are about to find me. Take 10 seconds and praise God for your neighbor. Blessings. Increase promotion, peace, joy, the intangibles, strength, clarity, wisdom, power. It's yours. It's yours. Put those hands to. I didn't mean to preach this long, I'm sorry. It's been three weeks. Praise him, praise him. 
praise him, 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 praise him. this house. Bless his name. You can't see it, but flying over your head, moving in your life, are some angels. better praise him back there in that sound booth. You better praise him back there in that sound booth. Get your praise on cause I see another angel. I see another angel. I see one more angel sweeping by. Somebody shall glory. Somebody shall glory. Somebody throw your hands up and shout glory! I'm sorry if we've been in here too long for you. But I got a feeling God is giving somebody what they need right now for what they got to face in the future. Angels will take care of you in a wild place. Sometimes you can't change the place but you just got to change your perspective. Stop focusing on the wilderness. Stop focusing on those animals. And thank God for the angels. When I read that text, Miss Wendy, tears started streaming down my face because it was a sweet reminder that even when everything else seems to be falling apart, God will let an angel minister to you, serve you, the Bible says, feed you even. The angels will give you what you need. If you're here and you need to move forward, I'm sorry for the length of the message. I have not preached in three weeks. I had a lot in me. But I want you to stand with me. If you need Christ, come here. Shake my hand. If you need a church home, come here. Shake my hand. Some of you are tempted to move backwards. And God says, no, 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 no. You've been through too much to go backwards. This is your season to go forward. We're not going to wait long. If you're coming, come on, shake my hand. Come on, shake my hand. Come shake my hand. If you're in the overflow, ask somebody to walk you upstairs if you want to come. Or you can join right there. If you're in the balcony. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I see you coming in the spirit. I see you. I know you need to come. Come on. Come on. Tell that person beside you, I'll walk with you. Tell them, I'll walk with you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. Forward, forward, forward. Stay right there. Anybody else need to come forward? As you walk forward, he'll shift your life forward. He'll grace you with a path 
fill you with his purpose, guide you in difficult places, guard you with the angels through the pain. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes. Bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Stay right there. Make all things new, yeah. Come on. Yes. Bless you. Welcome home. Come on, come on, come on. Wait a minute. Let me hear them. Let me hear them. Wait a minute. Y'all say it. Y'all better sing. Forward. Come on, I like that. Come on. One more time. Let them sing. Let them sing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. Come on. Sing it from your heart. yourself. Come on. We thank God for one, two, three, four, five who've come today. Can y'all help me celebrate these five? I feel there may be some more, but I gotta leave it alone. Don't miss an opportunity to move forward when you know the car of your life has been stuck in park. You control the gear. If God is saying go forward and you know you're in park, you need Christ. You need a church home to help you navigate how to go forward after seasons of being stuck in the same old, same old. Some of us go back because it's comfortable. Stuff God told you to leave, told you to walk away from. Sometimes we choose comfort over our call. And God is calling you forward. I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds to move if I'm talking to you. Don't miss this moment because you're nervous about people. It's people in clubs, it's people at karaoke, it's people at games. You know they at karaoke, don't you? There's a lot of people everywhere. Matter of fact, the party ain't good till it's packed. Well, it's a lot of people. There's gonna be a lot of people in hell too, and heaven. So get over the people and come walk in your purpose. If I'm talking to you, move. I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for you. I'm deliberately delaying just for you. Who am I waiting on? Who am I waiting on? Who am I waiting on? Who is number six in the room? Who's number six? Who's number six? If you're here, make the move, make the move, make the move. When you move, God will move. Just like that. Come on, you move first and watch God move. Who am I waiting on? Who am I waiting on? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You coming too? God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Are you coming out the balcony or are you leaving? I can't see. Coming? Come on. Come on, y'all. We can thank God better than that. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Well, that was... That's somebody else coming. Come on, come on. Thank God. You 
want to accept Jesus? All right. You want to accept Jesus Christ? All right. Come on, let's thank God. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on, y'all, help me thank God for ten who have come today. Everybody shout, go forward. Let me tell you a secret. I almost called this series Fast Forward. I thought it was clever and cool. We're fasting. Let's fast forward. And the Lord was like, did nobody tell you to call it Fast Forward? Because you will make somebody think that the only way to go forward is fast. Sometimes it takes time. It's inches, centimeters, millimeters. It don't matter the speed. As long as you get to where God calls you to be, keep moving forward. I want to put you all in the hands of our First Touch Ministry. Deacon Eric is there. Would you all follow them? Fellowship, come on, get real loud for our family. Our new family, welcome. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Listen, can I give you an opportunity to do something as we got to get out of here? I have to go preach in West Zamunda, Hillside. If somebody feels led to sow into this word today, Y'all know I don't play with you. And don't go running out the door in a rush. Just give me five minutes because some words you need to sow into. We already took the offering. Fun first Sunday, that's done. We did that today. But if you want to sow by faith, you want to you accept Jesus, well, welcome. Bless you. Well, we're going to walk you down. Dr. Walker. Would you walk my sister Pavy, Dr. Pavy, and Dr. Walker gonna walk you down. Y'all give them a hand. Y'all give my sister a hand. Amen. Anybody else wanna come? It's cool. Ain't no rush. If you need to sow, come on and sow. Come on and sow. I'm not gonna stop you. If you say, I needed that word, I received that I'm moving forward, and God's gonna help me go forward, come sow. If you want to accept Christ still, you can come still. Shake my hand. Come so, come so, come so. And this ain't for the folk. Well, what are you asking for another offering for? If that's your attitude, stay right there. But there is power in sowing into where you hope to see a harvest. And this is for the folks that say, Pastor, I, I need to sow into that word because there are some areas in my life I'm trying to move forward in. And I'm just going to sow by faith. That God is going to be with me on this journey. That's what we're doing. That's why we sow into the word of God. It's not so the preacher can benefit. No, it's your benefit. You sow and you schedule a harvest. You sow and you schedule a harvest. You sow and you schedule a harvest. And I'm touching and agreeing with each of you who are sowing. You will move forward and life will be better and life will be greater. And the storms will not consume you. The water will not drown you. The fire will not burn you. The Lord will be with you. I touch and agree that there will be a peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm talking about that peace that doesn't even make sense. Everybody's waiting on you to fall apart and God will keep you together. You will move forward with your brain and intact, your mind intact, your emotions intact. I'm speaking life over you because I feel it in the spirit that you will go forward and you won't lose anything. That is necessary for you to move forward. You won't lose a thing. 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 Lose a thing. Your spirit, your hope, your faith. You won't lose a thing. God is going to give you exactly what you need. I'm touching and agreeing with those who are sowing. God bless you. I see you on your rollator. My grandma used to have a rollator. That's some, you mean to come when you come with the rollator. This for me? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This for me? All right. Well, thank you. Praise the Lord. Let me see what it is. Amen. That's for me. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. 
That's uh, Alderman David Moore's mama. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Amen. Thank you. All these blessings. Thank you. All right. Y'all ready to go home? Ready to eat something good? That's for me. Oh, y'all so nice. Thank you. That's for me. Stay seated. We done sweated. We musty. Don't move anymore. This for me. Thank you so much. Y'all so sweet. Thank y'all for loving on me for my birthday. That's what this is. It's birthday love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had one of the best birthdays in spite of everything going on. And a lot of that was because of you all. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for every card and every gift. Thank you. My wife and I thank you. All right. I don't have anything else to say. Let's receive this benediction. I'm going over the hillside. I will hug you next Sunday. I'll hug you next Sunday. But right now before the benediction, just hug me in the air. Come on. Give me a hug. I need it. And you need it too. Come on. We together. We in this thing what? We in this thing what? May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles end the way they should. May your bad days keep on proving that God is good. I pray your whole life keeps on proving that God is good. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. And I can't wait to see you next Sunday. Peace, peace. Give somebody a hug and tell them I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Tell them I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Peace, peace. Women's History Month Fellowship. I'm Pasha Spencer, and this is your weekly edition of FNN Fellowship News Network. The Lenten season is here, and our fast is in full effect. Remember, no bread, no sweets, no fried food, now until Easter, with Sundays off. Also, we are encouraging everyone to join us in our spending fast, where you can choose one of the following. No online shopping, no purchasing of clothes or shoes, no eating at restaurants. Make sure you get in where you fit in as we fast and pray together as one church body. Join us on Tuesday for vitamin C at 12 p.m. via Zoom. This is our noonday Bible study where we get to see God through his word. Join our senior care ministry for their property tax exemption and unclaimed property workshop on Friday, March 10th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will have representatives from the Cook County's Assessor Office and the Illinois State Treasurer's Office here presenting and answering any questions. RSVP by calling the church office by Wednesday, March 8th. We are praying for the family of longtime member Miss Eunice Little, the mother of Dr. Joseph McCray. Mr. Henry Strickland, the brother of Mrs. Zephry Pugh. Please keep these families and all of those that have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. Now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out.
It's that time again at Fellowship Chicago. Jesus Week 2023, April 3rd through 6th. Hosted by Pastor Reginald W. Sharp Jr. With special guests, Senior Pastor of Christ Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, Dr. Gina M. Stewart. Living for God and living a prayer-filled life is hard work. Senior Pastor of House of Hope Atlanta in Decatur, Georgia, Dr. E. Dewey Smith. What's most important is not what I can acquire or ascertain. I'm at a point where I want Jesus. Assistant Professor of Preaching at the Seminary of the Southwest in Austin, Texas, Dr. Dominique A. Robinson. We honor the work of our ancestors. We honor the work of the generations before us, and we have a responsibility to maintain the legacy. Senior Pastor of the Lighthouse Church in Houston, Texas, Pastor Keon Henderson. If God said it, you can bet your bottom dollar you gonna see it. Nightly Jesus Talk with Joanne M. Terrell, Ph.D. from the Chicago Theological Seminary. All people have a stake in pursuing goodness and justice. Powerful music ministry from Crystal Rucker. Kick off each day at 6 a.m. with Dr. Daryl Hall. In the world, what goes up must come down, but in the kingdom, what goes down must come. Worship with us daily at 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. Jesus Week 2023, April 3rd through 6th at Fellowship Chicago. That's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and social media pages for these announcements and more. For real-time updates, text Fellowship Chicago, one word, to 55949. Have a great week, family.